Starting broadcast. All right. Live stream is starting soon. We got people in the house. Hello world, it's Siraj. Good to see everybody. We are here, or I am here, in Portland, Oregon, uh, just for a week, just to check it out, see what it's like here. It's actually pretty cool up here in the Pacific Northwest. Hi, everybody. I'm going to list some names. Uh, everybody who's here, Alexandros, Radu, Marco, Max, David, Setu, Raphael, Furya, Sasa. Hi, everybody. So, Yash. Um, today, we are going to uh, make a bot for the game of asteroids and we're going to uh have it get better and better at the game until it's able to beat it and it's going to use a technique called neuroevolution it's called neuroevolution okay uh that's the name of this technique and uh we're going to do this in javascript okay and this is a part of a collaboration with another youtuber named daniel Schiffman uh that i am excited to do okay so that's what we're gonna do uh, I'm going to start off with a five-minute Q&A, like always, and then we're going to get started with the code. All right, here we go. Five-minute Q&A. Let's do this. I'm doing pretty well. I'm excited to be here in Portland. I'm going to make a, an experimental video here. Is Dan joining live? No. Which tool do we have to use? Um, it's going to be just pure JavaScript. Neural evolution like a genetic algorithm? Yes. Hi from Israel. Did you go to NIPS? I didn't go to NIPS. I didn't go to NIPS, but next time I will for sure. Are you building the game too? Not the game, just the AI code. You should come on up to Seattle. I would love to. I would love to. Um, advice for upcoming computer scientists. Um, find a paper that you really like. Just find a paper that you really like and then try to replicate it. And then if you need help, use an advisor or someone who has a lot of experience. But I found that replicating papers has gotten me really good really fast uh, at a lot of, uh, at least for ML. And I'm sure, I mean, the same can be applied to computer science theory. What do you do, Siraj? I do this YouTube channel full time. Any news about Rocket AI? Guys, I'm sorry to break the news for you, but Rocket AI is a total hoax. It's not real. Everybody was in on it. They trolled everybody. Temporally recurrent optimal learning, troll. Okay? That's the acronym. Are you drinking coffee? Yes. What can a high schooler do in machine learning? Right now, um, you could get started with TF Learn or Scikit Learn. Those are two great libraries to get started with. Find a data set on Kaggle and then run a model on it and see what you can find. Will you ever cover will you cover other AI concepts beyond neural networks? Absolutely. Um, TensorFlow versus Keras. Um, TensorFlow. Which AI tool will you be using? In this video, I'm not. I'm using pure JavaScript. Um, uh, please bust a wrap on screen right now. I'll say that till the end. For the end. Uh, papers from where? IEEE uh, archive. Arxiv.org. Archive is a good uh, place. Shall I tweet you for technical help? Yes, you can tweet me. But at the same time, remember, we have a community, guys. It's not just me. We're all here to help each other learn. So there's a Slack channel with a link in all of my videos. So also remember to always ask questions there as well. Um, two more questions, and then we're going to get started. Thanks, Alexander. Uh, is that a promise about busting the rap? Yes, it is. Did you Please remind me, though. Difference between Siri and Google. Uh, Siri is worse in every way because, like, wow, Apple, you just totally missed the boat on AI. And just now you just, like, published your first paper. Congrats. Uh, but Google now is just, like, way better. Like, they're, they're, the, the learning algorithms they have, the data that it's trained on, it's just way more. What do you think about Octave? It's not that great. How to implement deep compression by Song Han? Deep compression, well, first of all, anything with compression in neural networks has to do with a, an autoencoder. Um, so you're probably going to use an autoencoder. The word deep implies many uh, layers, so like lots of layers. Uh, and the specific one that he made, I haven't seen, but show me a link and then I'll, I might make a video on it. Okay, so those are my questions. Those are my questions. Um, now we're gonna get started with the code, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and screen share. Let's do this. All right, so I want to start off by showing you guys a demo of this code so you can see what it looks like, okay? I'm going to show you guys a demo of this code. So what this code looks like is this. 
So what happens is a uh, game of ass playing and many different generations, many different uh, space uh, ships are created. Uh, this is, so this is neuroevolution. I'm going to talk about what's happening here. But as you can see, it's just there are a lot of them that are being spawned, a lot of ships, and they're all trying different moves. And the one that has the best move is the one that's going to survive and reproduce and create a better one. And so over time, it's going to get better. But you can see here that the basic idea I want to show you by looking, by showing you this uh, game is that uh, these things get better over time. And there are many of, them, many of them that are spawned. Okay? So that's the basic idea. Um, the link will be in the code. Okay? Are we lagging? We're lagging. Cool. Okay. So now let's go ahead and get started with this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get started with the code. I'll make this bigger so everybody can see what I'm typing. So this is going to be neuroevolution. That's the technique we're using, is the technique. for. Okay. So that's the technique that we're going to be using. And uh, yeah, so there's that. And so, so that's what we're going to do. And so what ha what's happening here is like, while well, most uh, learning methods focus on modifying just the strength of the neural connections. Uh, this doesn't. This modifies not just uh, the neural connections. It modifies uh, the actual structure of the network. So adding neurons, um, it uh, adding connections, it, uh, it even uh, modifies uh, the learning rate. So a lot of hyperparameters are modified by this. It's not just the connections. So that's what makes it different from like from regular uh, backpropagation. Uh, okay. So bigger font. Okay. Let me make it a little bigger. Okay. Boom. So that's the technique that we're going to be learning. Uh, and this is a type of reinforcement learning. This is a type of reinforcement learning that we're going to be learning right now, and because it's happening through trial and error. Uh, so what's going to happen is. We're going to, uh, and the reason we're doing this is because the optimal actions at each point in time are not always known. Like, remember, this is a game. This is a game. Uh, things are random. Things are random. And neuroevolution proves to be a good technique for this uh, because it, you're able to optimize behavior given only uh, sparse feedback. So sparse feedback is available. Is available. All right. Um, so that's what's happening here. So, so the steps are we're going to do this in increasing order. So we're going to go ahead and create our neural evolution uh, object. But in that, we're going to create increasingly larger uh, objects. So the first one is the neuron, and the next one is the layer. Then it's going to be the network, then the genome, and then finally the generations. So as you can see, each of these gets bigger over time. So, um, so we'll create neural evolution as our big master object. Then we're going to create a neuron. Uh, and so a neuron, is, there are many neurons inside of a layer of a network. And then there are many layers inside of a network. And then each network is considered a genome. A genome is another word for individual or being in, a, in, in what's called a generation. OK, so there's a generation. A generation has multiple genomes. Each genome has its own neural network. Each neural network has its own set of layers. And each layer has its own set of neurons. OK, so it's all abstractions. OK, everything is. Um, all right, everything is, is just like this. All right, so, so that's what's happening right now. Um, and sparse feedback means that you don't have a lot of feedback. Like, you don't have a lot of data. The word sparse is applied to data when we don't have a lot of it. So if there's a lot of zeros in our data, uh, that, that would be sparse, OK? So let's go ahead and get started um, by doing this. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and create our first variable. It's called neuroevolution. Neuroevolution. That is our big master variable. And it's going to be a function, and we're going to give it options. So what are these options? Options are another word for hyperparameters. And I'm going to talk about what the specific hyperparameters are for this. OK? So we're going to start off by define, defining our self variable by calling this. OK? That's the first step. Now we want to create those options. So remember, options are our hyperparameters. Um, this is unsupervised learning indeed. Exactly. Um, options are our hyperparameters. So we're going to start off by saying uh, the first option we want is our sigmoid function. Let me talk about what the sigmoid function is. But first, let me type it out. So sigmoid is an activation function, OK? Um, sigmoid is an activation function. And it's a function that we run in every neuron of our network, OK? So let me write, write this out. I'm going to create a variable called AP that is negative A over 1. And then I'm going to return 
this equation. What is this equation? Well, this is the actual sigmoid equation, and it, it is a static equation. Let me explain the hyperparameters in a second, but this is a static equation, and what it's doing is it's converting every number into a set of, into a probability. So this, this sigmoid is run in, this function is run in every neuron of our network, okay? And it's how we convert our numbers into probabilities. Return. Okay, return. What are hyperparameters? Hyperparameters are the tuning knobs of our network. They change over time. Okay, they are the tuning knobs of our network. We can change what they are. Okay, and I'm going to show you a list of hyperparameters in a second. The next function we want to create is called random clamped. Okay, random, uh, it's called random clamped. And what this function does is it uh, returns a random value. It's, and we can use that to generate weights as well. So that's a different point, but we're going to use this to generate a set of weights later, okay? And so there's that, and I want to return math.random. We're going to use the random function. We're going to multiply it by 2 to make sure that the number is big enough for us, and then subtract by 1, okay? So there's, those are, there's that. Now we're going to create our list of hyperparameters. The first one is going to be the population, which is the size of our population, right? How big do we want this, this uh, population to be? The next one is called elitism. What is elitism? This is the this is the number that we're going to apply to uh, each of. So 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 elitism is whenever um, we are. Uh, so let me give you a quick explanation of of of, of uh, genetic programming for a second. Genetic algorithms. So you you have a population. So step one is a uh, you have a population, and then what happens is they perform crossover, which is they 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 breed together. And then the, the end result is then you mutate those children and you keep going, right? There are three, right? So, so, so you select the best ones, selection, and then you perform crossover. You take those and you mate them. And I'm going to show you guys what mate means in this context. And then we're going to mutate them. And so this is what elitism does. Elitism is dealing with the mutation. Elitism is we're taking how 20%, right? It's 0 0.2. So we're going to take 20% of the best uh, offspring, okay? Um, so that's what's going to be happening. Um, so right now, we're going to say random behavior is, is going to be uh, 0 0.2. Okay, so what is random behavior? Um, random behavior is the new random networks for the next generation, so the rate. So how, how, the, the, how, how random do we want this to be, right? The next one is the mutation rate. Mutation rate is saying uh, what the, the rate of the, that we're updating the synapses. How, how much do we want to mutate them? Okay, and then we have a mutation range, okay? Uh, why the trade-off between 20%? Good question. 20% uh, as opposed to something larger, like, I don't know, more than 50? You want something that's less than 50 because you only want the best ones. You only want the best ones, and you want to diminish the rate uh, that, that, you want to diminish the, the rate that the uh, population is, is uh, breeding so that by the time you're done, uh, first of all, it's faster, that the network trains faster, and you only have a few at the end, okay? Um, okay, so there's that. So the mutation range is going to be 0 0.5. Uh, then we have our actual network. So the network is going to be 1. Uh, and so what is the network? Well, now I'm, defining, um, now I'm defining the size of the network. What does that mean? It means uh, the, it, like the, the structure of the neural network. I want one layer. Okay, I want three of them. So this is a three-layer feed-forward neural network. Okay, so that's the network. And let me define that as an array. Uh, so that's an array. And so now we want another hyperparameter called historic, which saves the, the, the latest generation that's saved. That's what it's going to store. What's the last generation? Right now, we'll initialize it as 0, because there are no uh, generations right now. The next one is going to be low historic. So we're only going to save this, the score. right? It's a Boolean that says, like, we're only going to save the score. Now we want to sort sort it, right? So we want to sort it up till negative 1. So what order do we want to sort things in? We're going to sort it right now in the sending order because it's negative 1. If we wanted it to be positive, we would do positive 1. Okay, this is a bot. So now NB child 1. All right. So this is the number of children that we want to breed, okay? So that's it for our uh, hyperparameters. Let me just move that up. That's it for our hyperparameters. And now we can go ahead and initialize this. All right, so let me go ahead and move that here and say, okay, so now we're going to initialize our, our set variables to have options available. Okay, so what is this? 
Now I'm going to um, behavior. Oh, good call. Typo on behavior. Behavior. All right, great. And variables. No, variables, not variables. Here we go. So uh, we want to create a set. What do I mean by a set? We want a set of options, and we're going to initialize that like this. Um, okay. So um, so now that we've initialized our variables, we're going to uh, say we're going to loop. And what we're going to do in this loop is we're going to say for every option that we have, uh, for every option that we have, I want you to do, to uh, Say if 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 there's nothing there right now, then I want you to fill it into our existing list of of options. Okay. Uh, boom, boom. Got to add those in. Boom. Okay. So I've got my commas here. Okay. So then, if the option is there and it's not defined, undefined, then we are going to add it to our options array. Okay. So we want every option to be. Uh, in my options array. Okay, so options up till I. All right, so now, um, so there's that. And so now, let's create our neuron. We're going to create our neuron. Um, all right, so our neuron is going to be, um, it's going to be a function. To, so the neuron has an internal value, and as, as it has a set of connections to every other neuron in the next layer. Okay, so we're going to define both of those two, uh, 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 both of those two variables. Okay, so the first one is the value. It's going to be zero. Like, what is the value of this neuron? Well, we're going to initialize it as zero, and then the weights or connections to every other node, which we're going to store in an array, which is empty right now. The next step uh, is going to be to randomly initialize our weight values. Uh, we want we want them to be distinct. We want them to be distinct. Okay. All right. So now we want them to be distinct, right? So let's go ahead and do this. So the first one we're going to do is we're going to create a we're going to create a neuron. It's going to be a prototype object, um, which is the higher level uh, object, and we're going to we're going to create our population function, okay? Or, or we're going to populate it, by, and we're going to do this by randomly initializing weight values, okay? So let me show you what I mean by this. We'll initialize a function, and the parameter is going to be n b, okay? which is uh, the number of weights that we want. Uh, why randomize the weights? Uh, because, uh, well, I mean, there are many, many methods of like, like how to initial, initialize weights. Random is the most popular, um, but there could be a better, a uh, more, a uh, more, um, a more, uh, efficient way of doing that, but right now, uh, and that's an area of research as well. But generally, we we randomly initialize our weights, and then we make them better over time. Uh, but just like randomly uh, sampling data, uh, it could be we could do that better as well. But random is just an easy way to to start off. Okay, so we'll initialize our uh, weights array, and uh, we're going to iterate through every weight that we're given. So var i equals zero. Um, i is less than the number of weights. And then I plus plus, okay? I plus plus. So we're going to say add every weight to the list of weights that we have. And what are we using? We're using that random clamped function to add a randomly initialized set of weights to our weights array. Okay, so that's for our neuron. Now let's do our layer. Remember, we're increasing the size of of how big we are in, uh, of, of the objects that we are creating every time. So we did our weights, and now we're gonna do our layer. And a layer has an ID and a number of neurons. Okay, those are its two uh, attributes, an ID and a number of neurons. So we'll start off by creating a, our layer, uh, and I'll definitely do a recap at the end of the code. Uh, so we'll start off by creating a layer, and a, a layer is gonna be initialized by this index variable. That is the parameter, the index parameter. And what does that mean? Well, that's going to give us our ID. That's how we initial, that's how we um, identify this layer, right? So it's going to be index or zero, okay? And so then we want to initialize our neurons. How many do we have when we create a layer? None. So it's going to be an empty list, okay? It's, an, it's going to be an empty list. Now we're going to create our layer prototype for populating the layer, okay? So we're going to populate the layer with um, Thank you for that, uh, options. That was a typo. Now we're going to populate the layer uh, with neurons, okay, which we've just created. We've just created neurons, okay? Layer.prototype.populate. Uh, and we want 
there to be two parameters, the number of neurons and the number of inputs. What are the inputs going to be? It's going to be the set of actions that we take during the game. Okay, that's what we're gonna update our weights with. So we're gonna initialize an array of neurons and we're going to say, okay, so we're going to iterate through every single one of our neurons and we're gonna add them all to our uh, layer, okay? Um, let me see this question. Can a layer be iterated or is it ex explicitly specified? We can, uh, we can iterate through the layer. Um, generally, uh, in machine learning, we don't update the number of neurons inside of a layer. We don't update the actual layer itself other than the uh, weights. But in this case, in neural evolution, as opposed to just regular backpropagation, neural evolution, in neural evolution, we modify all parts of the network. We, we can modify the number of neurons in each layer. We can uh, modify the number of layers. All, nothing is safe from neural evolution, okay? So it's not just backpropagation. We, we're not just updating the weights. We're updating the entire uh, neural net, okay? So we're going to iterate through the number of neurons, and we're going to say, let's initialize our first neuron. It's going to be a new neuron object, okay? So we're going to say we want a new neuron, uh, and this is, remember, this is a class that we've just created, and we want to use that populate function that we already wrote, given the number of inputs, okay? So that's the parameter for that populate function. And then when we're done with that, once we've populated uh, uh, the number of neurons, we can just push those neurons uh, to this, this layer's uh, array, okay? So we can just, by using the push function. Okay, so that's our layer, and now we're gonna go even higher. What was the next step? The network, right? We've created our neurons, we've created our layers, and the next step is the actual network itself. Okay, and the network consists of layers. So we'll initialize our network uh, variable by saying, well, what does a network have? Let's think about this. A network has a set of layers. That's, its, that those, that's the attribute it has. So we'll initialize a layers uh, parameter. Okay, so the number of layers. Um, and now that we've initialized that, let's go ahead and create uh, a prototype for uh, giving it the layer parameters, okay? So we're gonna call this prototype, um, we're, gonna, we're gonna call this prototype uh, perceptron generation, okay? Because that's another word for neural net perceptron, although it's not as sexy, like people don't use it as much, uh, but whenever, um, you know, Usually whenever genetic algorithms come into play, someone like throws around the word perceptron. Uh, but I, I think neuroevolution and genetic programming is going to make a huge comeback. Like, like it, it had its heyday in the 80s and then people kind of gave up with it. But like, I, I think we're gonna see some great results, especially coming out of uh, OpenAI's universe, like this, that sandbox environment. There's a lot of possibility here, uh, which makes me very excited about it. Okay, anyway, so what we're doing here is, um, uh, noted. If JS, JS is a little confusing for beginners, noted. Okay. So we're going to create, look, what am I doing here? So I'm creating three variables, right? The index, of pre, the number of previous neurons, and then the layer that we're on, which we're going to initialize because we just created that using the index as a parameter. Okay. So what we're about to do is, we're, well, first of all, we want to populate the layer because we are creating a neural network. This is going to create the network itself, okay, by creating a stack of layers, okay? Okay, so that's what we're doing. Um, uh, I knew there would be a Westworld reference at some point. Some, one, one of my friends was like, dude, you need to watch Westworld. Someone on your channel is gonna mention it. It's gonna be great for memes and references, so you need to start watching it. And lo and behold, someone has mentioned Westworld. So I might need to check up on that show. Anyway, so, the, so we've created our three uh, variables here. So let's populate the layer with the inputs that we've already created, right? Up here, we have our input, we have our um, let's see, we have our previous number of neurons, okay? So each of our layers is going to be populated just like that. And we're going to add each layer to our existing array of layers, okay? So layer, that's that. And then we want to, the index, we're gonna iterate through the index and the index tells us which layer we're on, okay? So we're gonna iterate that, that index uh, counter variable. So now we're gonna, go, we're gonna iterate through every single uh, layer in our network. Uh, and we're going to we're going to add it to our uh, we're going to iterate through sorry we're going to tech, the technical term for this is we're going to iterate through every single layer in our uh, list of layers and we're going to add that to our network okay so we've stored a list of layers and we want to add each of them to our network so we'll initialize our first layer and so this is for the number of hiddens and what do we mean by hiddens hiddens is 
uh, the, the, the number of hidden layers that we've, that we've specified in the parameter. So we say, so we, for each of these layers, we want to populate it with a number of, of hiddens, okay? Um, oh, sorry, never, no, let me redo that. Un, so what I just said, undo that. It's not hidden number, it's not number of hidden layers, it's number of hidden neurons, okay? Um, uh, to answer your question, Bhaskar, yes, I will do a much more simple neural network tutorial uh, it's coming up. It's going to be. Uh, it's coming up uh, in January. Okay, so uh, so we we're going to initialize by using the number of hidden neurons and the number of previous neurons. And why do we want the number of previous neurons? Well, we want to wait. We want something to point to, right? Because our weights are are going to be pointing. Okay, so uh, now we want to say, well, now that we've initialized that layer. Well, replace what we have in our previous neurons with whatever we have in our hiddens, right? Because we've we've propagated forward and we're. We're replacing the old variable with uh, what we've um, already done, okay? So now we're going to push this layer onto the list of layers, and we're going to uh, iterate that index counter variable. So let's look over what we've just done. What we've just done is we've iterated through the number of hidden neurons that we were given in the input parameter. We have initialized a layer. We have populated it with those neurons. We've uh, set the previous neurons to whatever we have, wherever we had now. Uh, and then we've pushed that layer to the list of layers, okay? Uh, and so now that we've done that, we'll create another layer. And why do we want to create another layer? Well, there's one, there's one more thing that we uh, didn't think about. We didn't think about the output. Remember, we, we fed this function an out, a, a list of outputs, right, that we want. So we want to create that last layer for just the output, right? So as so these are our hidden layers, right? So remember, we created the first layer, which is our input layer. We created a list of, sorry, a list of hidden layers, and now we're creating our output layer, okay? So that's what we're doing, and we'll create it by uh, initializing with the number of output neurons and then the number of previous neurons. And lastly, once we've created that, we can just go ahead and push it to our list of layers. That's it, okay? So our input neuron was created, our list of hidden, uh, sorry, our input layer, our list of hidden layers, and then our output layer, okay? So now we've done that, we've created our network, um, and before we create our generation, uh, before we do that, uh, we want to create uh, a set of uh, helper functions, okay? So the first one I want to do is, is called compute. Okay, so this is an important step. So, um, computation step. Okay, so let's do the computation step. This is an important step, and it's a part of our network. So what do I mean by computation? Well, as data flows through our network, it's, it's not static. Uh, we're, we're actually applying, uh, uh, we're applying operations to it, mathematical operations. And I'm gonna talk about what these operations are. Okay, so, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check if the layer and the neurons are not empty. And if they're not, we're going to assign it uh, the input value. So we're going to check. We're going to say, OK, so check each of those input values. OK, let me check each of those input values. And I want to see if, uh, uh, if the initial layer uh, and the, its number of neurons so I want to see if its number of neurons is empty. That's what I'm looking for. Um, uh, let's add neuron, dot neurons, uh, and then wherever we are right now. And so if there's something there, then we want to add it to our the current uh, layer that we're on. Um, and we're going to say, uh, so whatever layer that we're currently on, add all of those neurons to it. Uh, and then, and it's going to be those input values, right? The input values. So, okay, so that was that introductory step where we actually fill that layer with, with neurons, okay? So now that we've done that, now that we've done that, now it's time to, um, now it's time to actually do the computation, okay? So what's happening here? We're gonna, the data is gonna flow through the layers and we're gonna apply an activation function to it and then we're gonna return the output. Okay, so let's do that uh, activation function step. We're gonna say, okay, let's gonna start off. Um, this step is sort of unclear. Okay, so let me, um, let me see. Okay, so, okay, so the activation function. So let's let's talk about this. So what is happening here? Um, I am, what am I doing? I'm updating the weights. 
Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm updating the weights using a sigmoid function. Exactly. So someone said sigmoid it. Exactly. So that's exactly what I'm doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to iterate through each of my neurons. Okay, so, so, so let's see. Iterate through neurons in layer. Okay, so let me just say that. Iterate through neurons in a layer. Okay, so for, um, for var i equals 1 uh, and... For i is less than this dot layers dot length, and let me see. Let me see this. Wouldn't it be better to check if this layers outside loop since it'll never change? Uh, let's see. Outside the loop since it'll never change. Um, actually, actually, um, that's a good point. That's a good point, and we could just do that uh, if we knew the size of right. So we could actually write that differently. You're right. That's a good point. We could we could write that differently. It still works, but we could have written that differently. Right. It's just a null check. Exactly. Okay. So where where was I? We want to iterate through every neuron in the layer, uh, and where was I? So length, um, and we've got. I plus plus. Okay, so what we're doing, we're iterating through every neuron uh, in each of our layers, and we're going to do a double iteration. So we're going to say for bar j, uh, for j in this dot layers. Uh, so for the length of the neuron, and then for each of the layers. Okay, so um, so for this dot layers, uh, where was I? Was I this dot layers i uh, dot neurons. And then, where was I? Okay, so so the first thing, okay, so let me talk about what we're about to do. Well, before I do this, I need to initialize this variable called sum. And let me talk about what sum is going to do. So we're going to initialize a variable called sum. And what sum is going to do is uh, that is what we're going to apply the, the activation, uh, we're going to use to create that activation function. So the sum is going to be, if we take the previous layer's neurons, if we take the previous layer's neurons, wherever we are with that, um, uh, and then we take the value, we're going to multiply that by this layer's uh, weights. So the layer that we're, so the layer that we're currently on, we're going to multiply it by the weights. So this dot layers uh, i uh, dot neurons. It's not as good as gradient descent. Um, I mean, we haven't seen uh, someone do it as well as you know, state-of-the-art uh, gradient descent with backprop. Uh, but, I mean, think about it. I mean, we, we evolved in, a, in, a, in an evolutionary environment, so I think there's still hope for uh, 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 genetic programming in general, okay? So we're creating this, the, uh, this, the sum, right? And so this sum is what we're going to apply to the... Um, we're going to apply it to the uh, activation function. So I've, I've created this loop, and uh, I'm going to say for each of those layers... Um, neurons j uh, dot value. I'm going to say self dot options, and then okay. So here's the activation function step. So I take that activation function, and then the parameter is going to be the sum that I've just calculated. So what's happening here? The activation function is going to take the sum, uh, which is the combined weight of the neurons in this layer, uh, and I'm going to uh, I'm going to uh, run the activation function on that sum, and it's going to convert that number into a probability. And so the probability is going to help the data decide where to flow. Okay, it's going to decide where to flow. And finally, once I'm done with all this, I can just say, well, now that I've iterated through that layer, make sure that the previous layer is now the current layer where I, where I was, where I just was. Okay? Um, okay, so we've done that, that activation step. Um, uh, Right, okay, so let's go ahead and write our genome now. So a genome is just another word for a, a being or a, you know, a, a living, a living uh, being inside of our generation. So each genome has its own uh, neural network, right? So if, you know, you or I are genomes and we have our own neural network. So we'll call this genome, okay, this uh, function or this variable genome. And the genome has a score and it has a... Uh, previous layer dot neurons dot value is it is it let's see uh, let's see um, no okay so uh, for genome we're going to say score in the network those are our two parameters and okay so now it's time to um, 
J does exist. J is a part of this var J up here on line 122. Okay, so for var genome, I want to say, okay, so it has a score and it has uh, an, its own network, right? And the score is like where it's at in the game. And that's how it's going to, that's how we are going to keep track internally of how well it's doing and decide whether or not we want it to breed for the next generation, okay? Uh, so we, those, those are our two attributes, the score and its network, okay? So that's the genome. And then now it's time for that highest level object. We're ready to code our generation. And what is our generation? A generation consists of several genomes, okay? So a generation is just a list. We can think of it as a list of genomes. And that's the only uh, parameter that we have, uh, the number of genomes, okay? Oh, good call. Don't capitalize genomes. Um, genomes, da, 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 da. Okay, great. Uh, This.genomes, and it's an empty list, right? So it's going to be an empty list. Awesome. Fitness functions for the win. Okay. All right, guys. So let's go ahead and create our function for adding the genome to our uh, generation. Okay. So add the genome, add, add a genome to our generation. So we need a function for this. Add a genome to current uh, generation. Okay. And let me just shut this off for a second. Okay. Okay. So for our current generation. Hi, guys. Hi, everybody. Um, okay. So... <clears throat> Let's go ahead and do this. So for our generation, we want a prototype uh, that's going to be called add genome. That's what this is. This is that. That's what this does. Okay, and we're going to say okay. So given a genome, which is our parameter, we want to add it to this generation. That's that's our task. So um, we're going to say um, well, we're going to say we're going to iterate through uh, wherever we are, and we're going to say. Uh, I is less than uh, the length of the genome that we're at, uh, which says, okay, so what we want to do right now is we want to uh, make sure that uh, we are, uh, we, we have sorted it, right? So that's the first thing we want to do. We want to sort it. And we don't want to add a genome if it's not sortable. So we're going to create a check for that. We're going to iterate through the list of genomes and we're going to check the score. And if the score is less than zero, so it's, if it's a bad score, then what we want to do is we, uh, that's, that's the first check. Okay. And there are two inner checks. So if, the, if it's less than zero and if this, if the genome score is greater than what we already have in our list of genomes array. So remember, we have one in memory, and then we have one that we're looking at. Uh, if it's greater than that score, then we just want to break because it's not going to be a part. Uh, it's not going to be in order. Okay, so we want to break. What's the other breaking? Uh, what's the other edge case? There's one more edge case that we want to code, and that edge case is. Let me back up a little bit, and let me say else. Uh, if the genomes score. Um, is less than where we currently uh, what we currently have. If the genome score is less than this dot genomes uh, score, then we also want to break. So remember, we only wanted to uh, add it if it's sorted, and if it and that this this prevents us from adding things out of order. Uh, and what do I mean by sorted? We, uh, we are sorting by the score. We we have a list of genomes, and they are sorted by their score. So now we want to add our genomes. Okay. So this dot genomes dot splice, okay? And splice is the uh, uh, the verb that we're using to add the genome to, to our, uh, our, our array of, our, our list of genomes, okay? So now let's write our breeding function, okay? So we've, we've, once we've picked the genomes that we want, the next step is to breed them. So let's, let's say, okay, it's time to breed. Time to breed. Da, 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 time to breed, okay? So, um, so that's what we're going to do. And this is our, uh, breeding function. This is our last, uh, major function that we're going to write. Okay. So time to breed. Uh, let's go ahead and write this, write out this function. Okay. Stick with me guys. We got this. Uh, we're almost done. Okay. So we're going to create a breeding, uh, uh, function okay and what is a breeding function going to take as its parameters well it's going to take two sets of weights okay the set of weights from one parent and the set of weights from the other parent um okay so we probably got about 10 more minutes okay so everybody relax sit back enjoy the ride okay so we're going to have um and a number of children right so these are our two parents and then a number of children okay that's what we're going to do uh, and so we're going to breed these two. So remember, these are two 
good networks. Okay, we've we've identified them as good networks because the scores that they provide are over a certain threshold that we predefined. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to iterate through the number of children. Okay, however many children we want are these parents to have. Okay, so we're going to say NB zero. As long as it's less than the number of children that you've defined, we want to iterate through all of them. And we're going to, of course, iterate through each of them. All right. So the first thing we want to do is create our uh, data variable. And what does our data variable do? Well, we take, we use the built-in uh, uh, JSON function, uh, JSON built-in parse function to uh, get the list of weights from the first parent. And it's going to, and so the weights are going to be just a huge mishmash of numbers, right? These are just a huge list of numbers. It's a matrix of numbers, but we want it to be uh, machine uh, readable for readable, right? Um, and so, if we want it to be readable, then we're going to, um, you know what? Uh, so Hitesh, it seems complicated, and I'm going to get better at making it more accessible, but. You know, it, it all depends on the syntax, and this could definitely be less complicated, and it will get less complicated over time as I do more live streams. So don't give up hope, okay? Uh, and this is definitely going to get easier over time. So JSON.stringify, and what are we string, stringifying? Um, this is indeed uh, neuroevolution. Uh, okay, so we're going to so we're going to stringify the first weight so that it's readable, and we're going to store it in a data variable. Okay, so now it's time um, for us to say. Uh, let's do a little bit of uh, of mutation. So we're going to take the first parent, and we're going to iterate through uh, every single list of weights in our network. Okay. <clears throat> um. All right. So let's go ahead and say um, g dot network uh, weights. By the way, you guys should uh, next time for the next live stream. I, I didn't tell you this time, but you should totally be. Uh, coding along with me, okay? So maybe not this time, but next time. I want you all to be coding along with me uh, in future live streams, okay? Uh, but for right now, just 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 uh, check this out. So we're going to iterate through all of the weights that we have, okay? We're going to iterate through every single one of those weights. And we want to now perform some mutation, right? So in order to mutate, we want to say, okay, well, let's arbitrarily define some threshold. So we'll, we'll, ra we'll, we'll randomly generate a number using the math.random function, okay? We'll, we'll randomly generate that, and we'll say, well, if it's less than 0.5, then we want to update our um, our weights from our that we stored in our data variable, right? And the data variable is just a temporary variable that's going to store our weights. And right, so if it's if it's right, so we're we're arbitrarily and randomly going to update those weights. Um, so now we've. Create g2.network, and we're gonna we're gonna add all of those weights from g2. Okay, ba 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 ba. So there's that, and so now we're going to add some mutation to each weight. So now here's the, here's the, here's the fun part. We're gonna perform some mutation, and um, so uh, we've we've mutated. So what's happened? Uh, we've mutated uh, the weights in the temporary data variable uh, using one of the parents, uh, the weight of one of the parents, g2, and now. We want to update the weights um, given uh, this other. So there, here, here's our other arbitrarily. OK, so uh, noted. So I need to heavily, heavily comment the code. Um, OK, so math.random uh, less than or equal to. So OK, so what do we have here? We, so one of our hyperparameters was called the mutation rate. Um, the mutation rate defines like how fast do we want to mutate. So that's the kind of the arbitrary thing, uh, arbitrary number we're looking at. Um, but we basically want to say like take those weights um, and update them uh, by adding uh, whatever a random uh, a random variable uh, times whatever our mutation range is, um, right? So like that's going to be, and we could tune that differently, and that's going to give us different results like for the mutation rate. Uh, and then we want to subtract the range. So we want it to be um, within a certain range, OK? So we've added some mutation. And now, finally, uh, we can go ahead and say, we've added our mutation. Go ahead and push what we've just created, the list of mutated weights, to our data's variable. And at the very end, we can go ahead and return. So let me, let me write a comment as well. Return the list of breeded genomes. These are the genomes that have been bred. So these are the updated uh, 
uh, more advanced, stronger, more robust neural networks. And that's just going to keep going into our each new generation, and they're going to get better over time. Okay, so list of breeded genomes, and we want to return that. Okay, so that's the that's the way that's the code that we're going to do. Uh, let me go go all the way up, and I'm going to do a short walkthrough of what I've just done. Um, and so let me. Uh, so remember, this is the link to the demo code. If you guys want to see it on the web, uh, I showed it at the beginning, and let me show it again uh, for a second. It is the game of asteroids. It looks like this, um, right? So many of them are generated, many little spaceships, and they're all trying out different things every time, and you can see them all dying. And once they're all dead, new ones will spring up, okay? So it's just like that. And so let me explain what's happening here, okay? So we're using something called neuroevolution. Neuroevolution is a technique, okay? And this is, so here's, here's how we're starting off, okay? We want to create our neural evolution variable, then our list of neurons, our layers, our network, our genome, and our generations. It gets bigger and bigger. Each Remember, that we, each object gets bigger and bigger. So it, it's a type of reinforcement learning because we are learning in real time from what the game is giving us. Okay, so we will initialize our neural evolution uh, variable. Well, well, all of our hyperparameters that are going to, uh, that are going to signify how we're going to generate these uh, uh, new neural networks. So remember, every spaceship is its own neural network. We'll define our set of options, and we'll start out by initializing our, neuro our neuron variable. Each neuron has its, its, its value and a set of weights, okay? And we want to randomly initialize each of those weights for each of those neurons. Okay, and once we've created a neuron, we'll create a layer. And a layer has an ID and a number of neurons, which start off as zero. But then we'll populate the layer by adding every neuron uh, uh, by however many we define, like number of neurons. Then we'll create a network, and a network consists of a number of layers, which we just defined previously, which contains a number of neurons. And we're going to generate that layer by first generating the, and let me, let me, let me add a comment here. This is a, a input layer, right? That's our input layer. Then we create our hidden layers, and then our output layer by using those three parameters that were given, input, hidden, and output. Okay, and then we have our computation step. This is where we actually apply the activation function in each neuron of every layer in our network. We turn those numbers into probabilities of the score of and of the weights of of uh, of 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 the of each of the bots. And each of those is a genome, right? That's how we define them as each as a genome. And a generation contains a selection of genomes. And we want to add a genome to the current network by making sure that it's sorted in order. And you will use a splice function to add it. And lastly, we'll breed our network by <clears throat> taking the weights of one of our parents, uh, uh, mutating it, and then creating an entirely new set of weights in the stata variable uh, by mutating the other one. And then we'll return the list of those weights. And we'll, we can use those weights to up, update the, the next generation of, uh, of neurons. OK? So now let me end the screen sharing. OK? All right, so we'll do a, a, a last minute, uh, a, a last uh, Q and A, and then we're we're done for the day. All right, so any any last last questions? Go for it. Ask me anything. Um, why does it need to be sorted? It's just, it's so it's it's better for uh, computational complexity if it's sorted. Then we can uh, it's it's going to be a re retrieval is going to be faster. Uh, retrieval for the scores. Um, so that's just for computational complexity. Does it make sense to change a network input with genetic algorithm? Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, it, well, the network input is already going to change because games are dynamic. Um, uh, right? So there's that. What screen sharing app do you use? I use Google Hangouts. I guess you owe us a wrap now. You're uh, absolutely right. Let me decide what to wrap about. Someone said something about Keras. Uh, yo, and I'm going to do this without a beat. OK, here we go. Um, I was trying out Keras. Man, my life is so lost. I'm sitting here in Portland. Man, what is this? It's like, I don't want to curse, but Horland, not really. Things are going wrong. My mind is so loose that I'm going all around. OK, so that was that. Um, wow, man, got that Portland jam happening right now. It's uh, on point. It is 10 AM on a, on a Wednesday, everybody. It is 10 AM on a Wednesday for me. So that's, that's what happened. Um, uh, so that was my impromptu rap. And how am I? I'm doing good. Am I going to test it? I'm going to add the code to the uh, link description. OK, so remember to check it out. Um, that just happened. Brian, you're absolutely right. Uh, that just happened. It is a place. Um, I'm going to shoot an experimental video here. Uh, and 
Cool. One more question and we're good to go. Is there an easy way to save the data that's created by the network um, in order to implement save that in order to implement it? Uh, yeah, no, the data is saved in the data's variable, and it's just a list of weights. And we can um, we can use those weights to update other types of networks as well. And we, that's that would that would be a part of transfer learning, okay? So we could learn from one game and then ideally apply those weights to any game. And that's what DeepMind did for the Atari DeepQ learner. Okay. Um, do you have a job? No. Uh, this is my job. Data set of all Reddit comments available. Anything in the future? I'm sure I'm going to do something with uh, Reddit comments. Uh, I'm not uh, in India. My parents are from India. I was born in Houston, Texas, and now I live in San Francisco, California. Uh, I'm new to this channel. What languages do you use? Mostly Python and uh, JavaScript. And uh, <laughs> cool. Okay, guys. Uh, Atari didn't use uh, neuroevolution. Uh, they used uh, something called a DeepQ learner. Okay, uh, right now I've got to go. Um, did I dye my hair? Yes. What's new for 2017? Uh, my Opus Magnum. My Opus Magnum. Uh, my beautiful dark twisted fantasy, uh, which is this new machine learning course, which I'm not going to say much about, but just know that something big is coming, guys. Okay. Um, cool. So yeah, that's it for this live stream. Um, uh, thank you guys so much for showing up. I'll add the code to the comments. Uh, I love all of you. Thanks for showing up. Uh, during Christmas, I know you know you have a, a lot of things you can be doing. So, uh, for now, I've got to go uh, hike a waterfall. So, thanks for watching. Ah, love you guys.